always felt like I was gonna be, I was gonna live in America. I was kind of a scaredy cat all my life, and I always did things according to the rules, or everything by the book, you know, a goody two shoes kind of thing. And I never took chances. Uh, and then I had to ex escape, and it almost felt like I was outside my body, looking at myself doing these these crazy things that. I would never do that I, I would never dare to do but I did them and in, in a way it seems like after that experience I, 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 I trust life it's almost like you trust fate it's you know people think like oh you have like freedom of will or you know is it a fate or is it free, freedom of will I almost I almost don't believe in freedom of will after that experience because it's almost like somebody took me and just like put another uh, 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 persona into me and got me out of the, you know, out, out of the bad situation and then took that persona back. And then I was suddenly the same guy from before, but in a, in a, in a different environment. Everybody's responsible um, because we, we buy into reality. Um, and that's the thing that, that, that really freaked me out. Because the war is the best teacher in a sense that it wakes you up from reality. Everything you believe in, everything you ever believed in, suddenly turns to shit. Even like love and family, you think like your family is going to take care of you, your family loves you. Mm -hmm. And then war happens, or some other kind of traumatic incident in your life, and you realize they don't. The, you know, the family... You didn't choose them. They can be just as bad to you and not love you and, you know, take advantage of you um, just as a stranger would. So, yeah, so my, my life is kind of weird because it, I've been shattered with these experiences and it's really hard to, um, to believe in all of this. He started off as a character that um, I invented. I heard some stories and I just invented a character because I wanted to have a dichotomy of a person who leaves and watches the, the war um, from the outside and a person who is in the war feeling it viscerally. And then at some point these two narratives collapse into each other um, and then you have no clue which one of them is real. I never wanted to write a memoir. I wanted to address this issue of uh, complacency with the readers because as human beings I think we really want there to be a concrete reality that we can then we don't have to think about it anymore but philosophically looking there's no such thing you know we are um, everything is based on perception and our so I can't believe that we as readers constantly trick ourselves into believing that something perceived through um, fallible senses and then filtered through a fallible brain and then translated into, uh, you know, imperfect language, um, imperfect words, and then edited for boredom and then uh, made sexy with style can then be called nonfiction. I'm sorry, there's no such thing. <laughs> sorry. And, and when I stopped doing theater sometime in like 2004, I missed that um, a kind of way of expression, and then all of this stuff, all of the trauma, all of the all of the things that I kind of survived and endured, were kind of building inside that I that I was trying to find a way to get it out. So I would, you know, so yeah, I would just sit down and take a particular experience and and write it out, almost like as if uh, tell, you know I didn't have money to go to a, a, a shrink. So I would just go and tell it to a piece of paper and then kind of get it out of my system that way, which is a dumb way to write a novel because it takes you seven years. Uh, it is organic, but then, it, you know, but then you have to kind of spend another two years looking at it sternly and cutting things out of your life that you love. You have a life story and for that there is no form that exists already. You know, you cannot take an amorphous, crazy, chaotic life and shove it into a you know a, a mold that already exists you have to he said you have to find a form that fits your experience and I was like 
oh, it's the other way around. So, you know, it almost felt like, oh, I can be a theater artist still, you know, and instead of working with other people, trying to tease performances out of them and trying to, like, you know, collaborate, you can just do all of that stuff by yourself. Well, I don't know if it destroyed it. I mean, there's still good, good books coming out, right? So it hasn't destroyed it completely. But there is, a, um, we kind of forget that as, as artists, you know, any kind of artist, we forget that there's a part of our job is, the part of our job is to mold the audience, to expose them to new things constantly. Because if you get this, you know, constant diet of the same thing, which is what publishing industry uh, delivers, you know, they know what they can sell and they then take the young artists and try to mold them into like what they can sell. So you, you're going to have the, you know, in, in 200, 300 years, uh, you're going to have a generation which just says, you know, somebody brings, a, 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 somebody writes a, a difficult book and they're like, that's not writing. What are you talking about? Where is the beginning, middle and end? Where is the moral compass? You know, you're not taking me by the hand into this weird world and like making me feel safe by the end. It's like, no, that, that's, you know, so I think we can push the barriers and push the envelope uh, and it's our duty to do, to do so.